Hello and welcome to Only One Truth Ministries. It's great to be with you today. I want to talk to you about some things going on in the world today we're all aware of. So stay tuned. I think you'll enjoy this. I think it might help you greatly. Uh, so God bless you and we'll be right back. This is Governor John Bell Edwards. A new day is coming for Louisiana. I've extended the stay-at-home order until May 15th to give all of us a little more time to slow the spread of the coronavirus so that we can begin to enter phase one. Your safety is my main concern. Visit coronavirus.la.gov for more information. Thank you and God bless. tell you first of all they talk about uh, that in this coronavirus pandemic they talk about only doing the things that are necessary and I want to talk about what's really necessary that we need to be doing in the book of uh, Job chapter 23 it Job says this in verse 12 he says I have esteemed the words of the Lord's mouth more than my necessary food. What is the most important thing to you? Is it God's word? Is it getting God's word out to help people, really being conscious of others? Or is it the things of the world and what you can gain in the world? Or is it just following what all man is telling you to do? Uh, David even said, he said that, uh, that the word of God was like a treasure hid and that he had found. He rejoiced at, at, at the word of God more than a a great treasure that he had found. Uh, he said, I've, I've hid you word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And the Lord, of course, gave a great commission in Matthew 28, 19. He said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. He said, go and preach the gospel to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe or obey all the things that I've commanded you. So what really is necessary? There was a story over in the book of Luke chapter 10, a story about Martha and Mary. Maybe some of you are quite familiar with it, but I wanna show you something that's really, really important here. Jesus had gone to eat at Lazarus and Martha and Mary, they were brothers and sisters. He went to eat at their house. And while he was there, Martha was about um, serving the guests and making sure that everything was taken care of. And her sister Mary instead was sitting at Jesus' feet, listening to what Jesus was saying. Well, Martha was quite upset at that, and she went to Jesus. And she told Jesus, she said, Jesus, tell Mary to come and help me because I've got all this stuff going on. And Jesus looked at Mary and said, I mean, Martha, and said, Martha, Martha, thou art troubled about many things, but only one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that part. The needful thing in your, in your life is not quarantine, is not staying away from this or that. Those things are fine. I'm not knocking those things by any means. But the ma main thing that's needful in your life is to sit at Jesus' feet and listen to him. Think if he had been quarantined, he wouldn't have been able to do that. Jesus gave us a great commission to go and preach this gospel. And he didn't say, well, don't go if this is happening or that is happening. Matter of fact, uh, over in the book of Acts, Peter was commanded not to preach Jesus any longer 
uh, to, to don't, not to do this after he had been in prison. They wanted to release him from prison. They said that we're commanding you by the law not to preach in this name Jesus anymore. Peter looked at him and he says, let me ask you a question. Is it better to obey God or man? Now, we know in Romans 13 that the, we are to keep the commands of the law. And owe no man anything except to love one another and to obey those for they are rulers of God's judgment. But when it comes down to what the word of God says, what God is saying, and, when, and man's law, you are to obey what God says. God says, go and preach this gospel to all mankind. There's, a, there's been pandemics in the world. There's a great, the greatest pandemic in the world right now is sin because sin leads to death. The Bible says in Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. God is gonna set up a quarantine. He's already set it up that everybody that is a goat, not a sheep, as it says in Matthew 25, is gonna be quarantined in a place called hell, away from the righteous. Now, they're saying you need to quarantine yourself. The Lord says this, he says, fear him not who is able to kill the body, but fear him after he has killed the body is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. You know, that's what you really to fear. But you know what the greatest pandemic is sin? And you know, let me tell you what, how sin is, is brought about. These people that are professing to be Christians are spreading the disease of sin all over the world. They're spreading it to their children, to their loved ones, to others around in the world by the way and the behavior of their lives. They're living in immorality, men and women living together outside of marriage, uh, doing all these immoral things, filth coming out of their mouth. That is the great contagious thing that people are intercepting, especially children, and causing them to lose their souls in hell. Now, you might lose your fleshly body by a virus or catching some disease, but you know what? If your soul's right, you go and be with the Lord and you don't have any fear of death. But really, the best thing we could do is quarantine people that are living examples of hell to others and professing out of their mouth that they're Christians. That's got to stop. A day is coming in Matthew 7, 21, every, when everyone's going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And there's going to be some people there that's going to say, hey, Lord, didn't we do this in your name? Didn't we give some money to the church? Didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we do all these wonderful works? Didn't we cast out devils? And he'll say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. You know, even the smokers in this world. My mother died of emphysema from secondhand that attributed to it with secondhand cigarette smoke. Why don't they quarantine those people, destroying those, those, the other people that are around them? That's a great pandemic, isn't it? Oh, what about this? What about abortion? Oh, they had the, great, the governor of, of New York stand up and say, he said, oh, life is inexposable. It's not exposable. We need to make sure all these old people are taken care of, and rightfully so. But out of the breath of him not long that, before that, he was saying, signed a bill that abortion was legal even after the woman had the baby. She could have the baby killed if she didn't want it. Really, life is not exposable to hypocritical things that mankind comes up with. Wow, what a shame. That's the real pandemic. Paul says we, that in, in Acts 15, 26, he says, we as men have hazarded ourselves for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, he walked around in danger all the time, beaten 39 lashes five times, suffered sheep, shipwreck, was out in the, in the sea, in the perils of the sea at night, perils of the land, just hazard after hazard in his life. Oh, Paul, you need to be protecting yourself. You need to go home and stay up, stay up at home so, and not go preach this gospel. There wasn't nothing stopping Paul from preaching the gospel. There shouldn't be anything stopping you from preaching the gospel because Jesus said, go and do it. Man says, don't do it. God said, do it. Who are you going to obey? The Bible says that Paul was warned even of the disciples and some of the others. Men of God said, don't go to Jerusalem, Paul. Tied him up. Agabus tied him up. He said, they're going to tie you up like this when you get there. They're going to put you in prison. You're going to, your life's going to be hazarded, man. Don't go. These bad things are going to happen to you. Paul said, man, he, he, was, he said, man, I see you weeping. I, I appreciate it. He said, but I'm not only willing to, to suffer prison 
or any of that. I'm willing to die for the Lord Jesus Christ. He was willing to die. Why? Because to die and depart and be with the Lord is far better. Look, we're looking to and hasting unto the coming day of the Lord Jesus Christ when all these earthly things are dissolved. We're looking for a new heaven and a new earth. To a believer, we have no fear of death. Not, and you say, well, it's not about us. Well, it's not about anybody because you know what? You've got a choice. Every person in this world has a choice. And there's coming a day, and it's coming soon, when all of this is going to be destroyed. Every person is going to be destroyed on the earth. God's going to send them to hell. God's also got a judgment side, and yes, he has a mercy side. But you don't want to be on the judgment side. You need to get things right with God. And you need to go, and you need to preach the word of God. Paul said in, first, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, be instant, in season, out of season. Preach the word. Reprove, rebuke, exhort. You don't stop preaching this gospel because there's, say there's a pandemic in the world. Keep preaching it. Keep living it in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you.